Hello and welcome to the Ionic YouTube channel. My name is Logan Braid. I'm a developer advocate here at Ionic. And in this video, we're gonna be setting up our first Ionic project. Before I begin though, if you're interested in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to learn more about Ionic development, please be sure to check out the Ionic, Ionic blog. The Ionic blog has a ton of great information like tutorials, product updates, announcements, and more. For more information, please be sure to check out the developers tab on ionic.io to view our docs and join our communities. We have an active community of Ionic developer experts on our forum and Discord that can help you through your Ionic journey and build the applications that you want to build. Our forum, docs, and Discord are great resources for any questions, comments, and feedback you may have to supercharge your applications as you're building them. Links will be posted down below. So in this video, we'll be going through um, a couple of different steps. We'll be setting up NPM, we'll be downloading Xcode, Android Studio, setting up the Ionic uh, CLI, and then setting up our actual project. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing that you wanna do is when setting up your Ionic project is you wanna download Node.js and that comes with the uh, NPM package manager. So um, if you go to nodejs.org, you'll see this nice little download screen and this is what you wanna go through. Um, in this case, as of this recording, the latest version is 18.17.1. That's the long-term support version. And that's the one that we're gonna go for. So let's go ahead and download the package. There we go. And you should, if you're on a Mac, get this install node.js screen. Uh, for Windows, you'll probably see something similar, but your mileage may vary and it may be um, a little bit different. But I'll go ahead and run through this installer. Agree to everything. There we go, and now we have our package installed. And once we have that installed, let's go ahead and make sure that it's actually set up correctly. Um, I'm gonna check node, the version, so it's node dash dash version. There we go, 18.17.1, and let's go ahead and see if npm is installed. npm dash dash version 9.6.7. So okay, we got everything that we need for that. So the next thing that we want to do is, is install, um, let's go ahead and do Android Studio. So Android Studio is also a fairly straightforward setup. Um, if you go to developer.android.com slash studio, that'll get you to the Android Studio download page. And uh, as of this recording, uh, the version that they have is Android Studio Giraffe. So we'll go ahead and download this. Um, some of these, or this Android Studio download might take a little bit to do. Of course, I'm running a Mac with an Apple chip. So we'll do that. Once that download is done, I'll go ahead and show off the install process. Here we go, download is done. So let's go ahead and install it. And on Mac, you're just gonna drag Android Studio to the applications folder. Okay, that's copying. And this may take a few minutes. Cool, copy is done. Let's make sure that it actually is showing up here. Yes, so we have Android Studio in our applications folder and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And the reason why you kinda wanna open it is to make sure that it's gone through its full install and configuration. Because every once in a while you have to do, like I've noticed with different versions, you might have to do some level of installation before you can run any uh, commands against it. So, okay. So Android Studio is opening, open. And as you can tell, I've done some Android development projects before. So mine might already have configuration set up. Just be sure to run through and make sure that everything is configured with Android Studio. And the next thing that we wanna do is install um, Xcode. The I think the easiest way to do it is to just go through the App Store and look up Xcode. Um, and you'll see it right under here, Xcode under developer tools. Uh, there's a way to do it through the CLI, but I think this is probably the easiest and fastest way, especially if you're new to any sort of development. But let's go ahead and download it. And I will say this download takes an extremely long time. It could be upwards of like 15 minutes to an hour, depending on your, your configuration. But uh, when this is all set up and done, I will go ahead and show you what to do next. So as this is downloading, I think it's important to note, if you have a Windows machine, you won't be able to download Xcode. That won't stop you from doing development with Ionic. You just won't be able to do um, iOS development with Ionic on a Windows machine. Um, so in the following steps, if you see me walking through stuff for Mac, specifically with iOS, you could just go ahead and skip those commands and uh, you can continue doing development for Android Studio. 
All right, and once Xcode is done downloading, by the way, that took about like 20 minutes, so don't be discouraged if it takes like 15 to 30 minutes. Um, let's just be sure to open up Xcode and let's do that to make sure that there isn't any uh, other install prompts just like that happened with Android Studio. Because you wanna make sure that everything is set up and configured, because if you have these install prompts, then uh, you won't be able to run the commands against these applications to actually open them in, with your Ionic app. And it creates kind of weird issues and uh, weird kind of errors. And so we just wanna try to avoid that. Um, here we go. So Xcode opened up, didn't get any extra prompts. Um, if this is your first time installing it, you'll probably get a prompt for um, some iOS, tvOS, and uh, watchOS packages. Uh, be sure to download what you need in order to get this set up or whatever you want for it. I mean, iOS, you definitely need, but it looks like this worked. So now that we have um, Android Studio or we have NPM, Node, uh, Android Studio, and Xcode set up, now we get to install the Ionic CLI. Let's do that. We'll open up Terminal, bring this over. And then the command to install it, we're gonna use npm, it's npm install dash g at ionic cli. Uh, luckily this is a pretty quick install, so it should be done fairly quickly. There we go. And let's make sure that it's there. And so we'll do ionic dash dash version. Yes, 7.1.1, so that did install correctly. Now that we have the Ionic CLI set up, now we can actually go through and start bootstrapping our application. And we're gonna actually use a specific command in the Ionic CLI to set up our project, and that is going to be Ionic Start. And so with the Ionic Start command, we have Ionic Start, the name of our application, uh, the mobile template that we're gonna be using, and then any options that we want to pass. So let's go ahead and navigate our way to the folder that we're gonna be bootstrapping the application in. In this case, I have a folder called WebStorm Projects. So I'll go into that. And then the command that I'm going to type in for this is ionic start tutorial app. So I'm calling this tutorial app. Um, it's going to be a blank template. And the reason why I'm using a blank template is because it's just the most basic template that you can get with the Ionic Start command. There are different templates that you can use, so be sure to check out the Ionic Docs if there's um, a specific type of template that you wanna use for your application. But then we're gonna pass a type of application, and in this case, I'm going to do Angular. Now, Angular is just what I'm most comfortable with, and that's why I'm choosing that as the type of application that I want to build with. Um, of course, there are many different uh, JavaScript frameworks that you could use with the Ionic Start command. Just alone, you can like set up a Vue application, an Angular application, React, Ionic Angular, and Ionic 1 as of this filming, or you can even use different JavaScript frameworks. But with different JavaScript frameworks, there's a different setup process. So I'll be sure to uh, put in a link for a video to do that uh, once it's created. In this case, we're just gonna do a basic setup. I'm comfortable with Angular, so we're gonna do an Angular application. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you, since it's Angular, this is an Angular specific question, ng mod modules or standalone. I'm gonna do ng modules because that's what I'm most uh, comfortable with. As you can tell, I already created a tutorial app. So, you know, in a previous recording, I'm just gonna go ahead and overwrite it. But if this is your first time setting up the application, you actually won't see that prompt. Um, so once this is done actually bootstrapping, I'll go ahead and kind of cut to the next step. There we go. So now the application is bootstrapped. It's gonna ask me if I wanna create a free Ionic account. Um, I already have an Ionic account, so I don't need to create one. Um, so I'm gonna do no, but you know, be sure to Go through yes if you want to create an ionic account and then set up your account there we go so now that is officially set up and bootstrapped it should have created all of the things that we need to actually run our application so what you want to do is you want to open up your ide and there we go so now i have the tutorial app set up and this is mostly going to be set up similar to an i uh an angular project um, so in here we have our actual application, we have the app itself, and then it has one component associated with it, which is the home component. We're not gonna do anything crazy here. Um, I just wanna see like, 
actually, let's go ahead and run and see like what this uh, application looks like by default. So we're gonna go to uh, terminal in our IDE and I'm going to run this. So I'm gonna do uh, run it with ionic serve. And this is just gonna basically run a local instance of our project and it's gonna pretty much generate everything that we need to see with like what's happening during development with our project. So as you can see here, it's a blank application. Looks a little weird because it's kind of more configured for like a mobile layout. But let's go ahead and uh, change the settings of this or go into development tools so we can see a different version of this application for mobile. So we have it right here. Um, of course, I went to developer tools. You'll see to the left of elements, this uh, device icon. Click on the device icon and then you can actually change the type of view that you have. So this is kind of like what our application would look like in mobile. I'm gonna make one quick change. I don't like the word blank. Let's just change it to hello world. So we'll go to our page template, our homepage template, go to ion title. Now we'll just change it to hello world. So the one thing to note in our, uh, in this project, you'll see with the default project, ion header, ion toolbar, ion title. Uh, those are things that are specific to Ion, uh, Ionic Framework. And so that is our design framework that basically is made to allow for a cross-platform development. Like you don't, you don't have to use Ionic Framework. There's many different frameworks that you can use. This is just what the default is and like what we prefer. So we changed that to hello world. Let's see if our application changed. Yes, it did. So as you can see in our browser, it says hello world now. Okay. So now that we have our application set up, let's go ahead and get this running on um, iOS. So uh, before I begin though, a quick change that I made, I added hello world to ion title down here and also up here in the home.page.ts file. Um, so you might see a little bit of differences when I actually run it if you're not making those types of changes. But in order to get this to run in iOS and in Xcode, we need to um, open up terminal and then we're going to do ionic capacitor add iOS. And what this will do is we'll add all the necessary things to get it to open up in Xcode and in uh, like allow us to run it for iOS. Um, so I went ahead and did that. And now we're gonna do ionic build. Uh, would you like to share pseudonyms, pseudonymous usage data about this project with the Angular team? We're gonna go ahead and just do no for now, um, but feel free to share it if you would like. That's gonna actually configure all of the details and actually build our application. There we go. And then we're gonna do one more, Ionic, Capacitor, Sync, iOS. Now what this does is like, I actually don't know if we need to run this for this part of, this, of like getting it all set up. Um, I was running through this earlier and I kind of ran into a weird issue. So once I did the build and sync commands, it actually fixed it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run them uh, like proactively just to get it up and running. But then the final command to actually get this into Xcode is ionic capacitor open iOS. There we go. And now this is what kicks off our application to actually open up in Xcode. And one more note about like the build and sync commands. Um, an interesting thing I ran into was I ran into this particular error. I'll show it on screen now. It was a settings error and I believe it had to do with CocoaPods. And because I didn't do the build sync commands, it didn't it didn't actually get CocoaPods configured. So <laughs> once I actually ran the build and sync commands, it fixed it and then I was able to run in Xcode but let's go ahead and see if we can get this to run on the uh, simulator. So um, if you're not familiar with Xcode at the top of the screen here, actually let me make this larger, you'll see app and then you'll see iPhone 14 Pro or it might be a different um, Apple device. If you click on that 14 Pro, it'll show you all the iOS simulators that are available. Um, I'm gonna keep it on iPhone 14 Pro. Let's just see if it runs. And if you go over to the left, the left side of this app, setting over here, you'll see this play button. Click on the play button and you'll see the application start building. And don't be worried if it takes upwards of like, you know, two, three 
you know, four or five minutes for it to actually start running because it does take a while. And it also depends on the type of hardware that you're running could also cause this to take a lot longer than expected. Oh, looks like it's going. There we go. So as you can see, hello world, ready to create an app. And now let's go ahead and compare to our actual web application that we had created. So we'll go back to WebStorm. We'll open up a new tab. Or you might already have this running. I kind of went through a different troubleshooting steps to get it to, to work. So I'm gonna, I closed out the original Ionic serve, but let me go ahead and get that running again. Let's see what this looks like and compare the two. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and let's go ahead and go back to WebStorm. We'll keep the server running the local instance of our application, but we'll go back to the terminal window where we're actually configuring all these things to run on different devices. Um, and so what we wanna do is to get this to run on Android, we wanna use the commands, ionic capacitor add Android, if I can spell Android. There we go, that's gonna get it going for Android. It's updating. I'm gonna go ahead and do Ionic build one more time. I don't know if this is entirely necessary since we already built it, but since we're adding a new, you know, like we're trying to get this to run on a new platform, it just helps to build. <laughs> um, and then we'll do Ionic capacitor sync. Android, and this will actually sync our web application to the Android build. Get that going. And now we want to open it in Android Studio, and that's gonna be with Ionic, Capacitor, Open, Android. Here we go, Android Studio is starting to open. All right, and I will say with Android Studio, similar to Xcode, it does take a while, especially if you're running it for the first time, um, it can take a little bit. Uh, the first time I actually went through this, Android Studio, I think took about like 15, 20 minutes before it actually booted, configured all the files. So I'm gonna do a jump cut to when this is actually done loading. Okay, I think, actually I think we're good. So let's go ahead and try to run this on uh, an Android simulator and see if it'll run. So if you look at the very top of the screen, you'll see app, which is your application. You'll see in this case, your simulators or emulators. If you don't have any um, set up there, then I would advise you to go into tools and device manager. You can download like all of the devices that you need to in um, the device manager. You can create devices and there's like a whole setup and I'll be sure to link instructions on how to do that. Uh, but in my case, it's already here. Um, and in this case, it's Pixel 3 API 31. Let's run it. There we go. And as you can see, we have our application and it is running in Android. Um, a couple of notes about this to kind of go back to devices. Um, another issue that I ran into the first time I was setting this up was a SDK manager. So if you just do the download, sometimes it doesn't like it can't find the actual Android SDK. So if you run into that issue, you could go into the SDK manager and up at the top, it'll say SDK location. Um, you can edit this SDK location and you can change the location of where like your install is. And that should fix the error. Uh, you would have to rebuild your application, um, but this will help fix that error. And with that, you should now be able to start your development journey with Ionic. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below or even go to our Discord and um, you know answer, ask your questions there and we should be able to help you out and get you on the right path with your Ionic journey. So thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Logan Braid. I'm a developer advocate here at Ionic and I hope to see you soon.